Charging Power Horses is the celebration of the album. It starts off and it's a ritual. It's It comes in and you feel it and it's like a feeling inside. The guy had definitely had to open the album on it. It was like oh, yeah. nothing else could it's have opened it. It's a ceremonial yeah. opening. <clears throat> it started out with loop on your loop station, didn't it? It was a loop on the guitar pedal and it just it just became put some uh, some big old thick guitars over it yeah no, it's got no some, drums either some drone just, just vibe some, about uh, it as well some bells as well wasn't it yeah the, um, there's um a little bell that's brilliant you brought it up actually so we answer, would have just it? not spoke about the most crucial bit the bell um a good friend of mine troy his dad has a little bell and it's got a little knight on it which is relevant to the theme of the record Went like that basically, to the mic. For a bit. and it makes this real nice sound. What, one each side of the speaker, yeah. they're all, it's all mental. Yeah, lovely. Charging power horses, go get them. Trophies in the attic. That was kind of like a demo. I don't know where in the process of writing the album that was. It was kind of in the middle somewhere, wasn't it? Yeah, we yeah, had the demo it. for for a while, and it had that obviously that down in and out. No, that was a huge part. Um, we loved about it. That kind we, of mathy yeah, kind we, of guitar part. Did we end up using that? In yeah, the, I think we did. We we used, and this recording? goes for quite a few of the songs on the record. We used um, some of the stuff from the demo that we recorded because we just couldn't recreate the moment. Sometimes a, you create a thing and it a happens lot, in a yeah, the moment. There's a lot of times you make a demo and you, you're chasing the demo, and we've kind of we kind of decided on this record. It's like rather than chase the record, the demo, just to just to accept it and just use the mm. use the vibe the vibe you take in the beginning, even if it was a bit scruffy or even if it was a bit, you know, yeah. it just had a, more of a vibe about it. So yeah, we definitely brought that all that through on this. Yeah, the demo is pretty fully formed. We kind of that was just like it's quite easy one that one. So yeah, I, I think the ending as well developed a lot when we got to um, when we actually recorded that ending. Um, it just that chaos at the end. We layered lots of thick guitars and obviously Alex's guitars that bend in. Um, did we use the the pedal, the harmonist on that? We did. Yeah, the harmonist pedal. Alex used a wicked pedal. The trophies in the attic comes from conversation we had outside the van when we were, we were talking about a, a different music video and someone said there will be trophies in the attic yeah we, we were a planet we were doing a half house video i think or we're trying to we're trying to locate some trophies i think the idea was uh kieran eating cer cereal out of a trophy i think and yeah. uh, i don't, can't remember who it was but someone was like there, we've got trophies at home up in the attic there will be trophies in the attic and it just know. was like sometimes and like we had the same thing when we did playground Alex said it in the van, and the second we, you hear a certain line, oh, I've got to write that down. And uh, straighten the notes. Yeah, straighten the, the notes. notes. Truth's in the attic. Really. Yeah, really and then rings. another interesting thing at the end of that one. Obviously, it goes off in a bit of a tangent after the heavy bit at the end, but it goes into like a kind of forward to the floor yeah. ele electronic thing, which we actually did in the studio in the cottage. Um, that was like one night where um, we brought our friend Dan Elston up. The percussion and, uh, on the record. Yeah, and we just sort of played around with this idea of it, it graduating from trophies in the attic into AAA, but via this kind of almost deaf, gripsy, distorted bass drum, wasn't it? I think trophies um, introduces something that you're going to hear a lot more in the future of Fox Jewel. Um, that kind of crushing, almost like dance music kind of vibe, techno yeah. vibe. Um, yeah. I think you're going to hear a lot more of that, and it kind of introduces it um, a little bit. Want to get the people ready, so yeah, that is. Up. That's trophies in the attic, Jesus and Christ. there will be trophies in the that attic. So hard. <laughs> Triple A. This track actually started off as like a synth. Um, we wanted to do some kind of quite the who. It was like gang, 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 and it was like an old synth. It ended up being a guitar. It ended up being more of a tremolo guitar thing. Well, first time I heard it, I thought it sounded like the Who. It definitely, it had that, had that like seventies like proggy feel to it, but quite modern and electronic, and yeah. definitely. It's um, also quite punky in it, and it's yeah, it's um to the point 
I think, the song as well, and it's very positive. Um, I remember kind of banging my head against the wall with the lyrics actually outside. I remember when I sat on there in the sun, in the lovely sun, it was lovely. A little stream, I sat mm. on a bench, I sat there writing the lyrics, and I couldn't get it right. And then out of nowhere, I had it. I was like, that's it. And that chorus, I remember the night when we, we did the vocals. Um, we were, it was a moment. It was a real, it was a real moment where we like knew we had something in it, that mm -hmm. chorus. We were oh, all yeah. like, oh yeah. yes, that bangs. You know? So I think that's the thing, because I, uh, I remember, um, hearing this song for the first time I was quite surprised to hear Fox Jaw taking this direction when I initially joined the band and I was thrilled you know it's like I feel this band covers everything I love and then everything else I love as well so um, I could bring something else of my guitar style into this um, sort of like that rock punk yeah. Pixies-esque 90s feel um, I wrote that lead line and Dan like loved it straight oh, away yeah, yeah. and so I think maybe you hadn't written many vocal lines off of a guitar line before I think yeah. maybe you'd be you know wasn't yeah. happening, but as soon as it, as soon as he got that. it, he got it, and I think it was the Welsh landscape. That really <laughs> That's proper um, Doolittle. Is yeah. it? Do you reckon yeah. it's very Pixies, and then you've got that drop at the end, Dana, and you've got the vocal, the delay vocal, which is something I'm really into. Like it's very that kind of almost a giant swan kind of do with the when the vocals are just very delayed, and uh, I love that how it just drops. And it's just the wall of noise almost, and got the vocals going around. That sounds killer live when that bit drops. Mm. Oh yes, and that's Ooh. the thing. I think a lot of '90s um, like punk-based music, like it is quite discordant and it is quite you know strange sounding. And I think like it completely makes sense for this band to have gone in that direction, at least for this record. Um, mm. Doesn't feel out of place at all, you know. No, it's uh, and um, yeah, I think we made it quite noisy as well, and uh, you know, it's positive as well. Mm. Lyrically, I think mm. it's quite positive. Um, we like to sing about sad and serious stuff, uh, but that's a time where I think we're being a little bit more positive and I think sometimes you need that. You don't drink a unicorn's blood. I think on this one we, we just wanted to write a heavy song. You know, Fox Joy is a heavy band, and uh, even though we went in new places on this record, we still wanted to, we still want to fuck people up, didn't we? We love to just drop it down to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so basically, yeah, this was just this was just going to be a heavy track always, and then it kind of it, the demo sort of existed for a while mm. as this heavy, light, you know, classic Fox Joy dynamic piece, and then. We had this idea, I remember mucking around with it, but the tempo, we really wanted this drastic tempo change like we'd done on some of the earlier stuff. Yeah. And uh, and a ma we managed to sort of get it, so the the actual, the slow tempo of the song, the what the song's in most of the time, when it graduates to the faster bit, is actually just a polyrhythm of that slow tempo. So that was kind of like a, you know, for all the nerds out there, like oh, that kind so of stuff. so technical, isn't it? Yeah. I don't even that one understand out. what he's on about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's like a, a real wall of sound, isn't it? It's sort of, and the, the, ver the verses, uh, vocal performances and that, I'm really proud of. It's like um, I starting to develop the way that I'm putting my vocals forward in, on this album a lot. And I think just the performances are very punky and raw and you can hear my voice like breaking in, in places. And I think that's very real because lyrically I'm being pretty open about it and honest about it. So Yeah, and then the... Just, the actual lyrics as well, like um, these were mm. quite down to the bone as well, weren't they? With like, uh, we were literally at the ranch when you were like, yeah. I, mean, I basically made you for the day. I was like, Danny, you're not coming out that room today until you write these lyrics. And then oh, you sat in there with Alex banging for my a head bit. against the wall. My words. And uh, yeah, so we gave him the room for the day, and he, he worked <sighs> on it. I um, I'm really glad where, where that went. Actually, That's, I, I'm proud. I love the lyrics in that track. I love the video as well. It's my favourite video I think we've done with Fox Show actually. Um, I don't know what it is about that video. I just it captures us really in the moment, you know, what we're about. Yeah, but uh, big old heavy one and that organ at the end. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> just that, we love to just drone an organ uh, over a riff. Yeah, can't beat it, can you? Yeah, you they can. Are. You cannot. Don't drink a unicorn's blood. Never. Mm. 
Bathhouse. Yeah. So yeah, that was one that um, I mean, was pretty much a formed song. Like the uh, the foundation of the notes were were formed. You know, I think before yeah. I joined the band. I but... think it was like it was quite between me and Danny. It was quite a quick demo that one because you know musically like you know rhythm guitar and stuff we're, we're hanging between two notes for most of the song and that was kind of that was always the vibe uh, was to be this punky kind of simple simple tune that we had um yeah. and yeah literally but you know when it come down to cutting the list for the album and what we thought was gonna make it we weren't even sure at the time if as an instrumental if that would make it we're like maybe this has got not not enough in it to mm. be on, on, a, on a fox show record which is really funny because it turned around to be like the lead single of the record. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I think? I think sometimes there is magic in repeating a chord sequence. I think actually a lot of the songs that done well on this record, it does have that sort of just that familiar repetition to it. Um, I think that was one of the ones where not much was happening with it. Um, so I remember you guys sent me some demos and I said, I'll have a little work on it. Um, Danny had already had the vocal line um, going. And I sort of imitated that in the um, verses, added some more to it. And I think once we started adding that, sort of then, it then like the bounce, didn't it? Mm. So it started to be like a vocal would dictate the guitar part, but then actually then it would go back the other way, and then a guitar would dictate the vo vocal, and it had yeah. this real like your lead guitar and, and Danny's vocal in that those verses kind of really they were bouncing off each other. And that was a real feature of the song in the end because I'm just playing it straight and Danny's yeah. just playing it straight on the bass. I and the drums it, are just laying it in, so. Absolutely, absolutely. I like I I you know, I feel like I, I there was definitely something there, you know, I do quite like straight up, you know, it was it was it was uh, straight to the point that song, but um definitely it was nice to add some frilly bits around it which I think gave it a bit of a, a bit more personality. And uh yeah, and then I think a lot of the lyrics even came from the sort of the spookiness and the discord and, you know, elements to the notes. Um, for me, though, when it really pops off, I remember Danny in practice saying, in the bridge, when it drops down, I basically just want noise, like no notes, essentially. And uh, I think for a lot of people, when the single came out, they were like, OK, Fox, you taking this direction. Oh, holy fuck, when that bit drops. There's and, a lot of it, yeah. experimentation as well, like mm. around that bit before that, when that sort of uh, sort of when we were sort of glitching around synths and stuff beforehand and mm. that a lot of that came to life when we were in the studio to be fair because we had this whole section where it's just drums and that crazy guitar lead that doesn't really make sense <laughs> um, and then we sort of built that up with like this this other vibe that we sort of developed in the studio and yeah but, I mean it's a crazy track mm. but um, it, yeah we couldn't have asked for it to come out better really it's no. one of the ones that you know went from down here to right up here for so. a song with two notes yeah. essentially yeah. Holy crap, you know, yeah. we've definitely brought it, brought it all to life. Mm. As, as we like to do, just, you know, a little track outro. Uh, so Tom Haskins came down to the studio and uh, he put some sax on the end and we just sort of like, we were just getting him to layer different notes that we were thinking about and trying to make these really mental harmonies on the end just to make this sort of like end piece of music that was completely different to the the piece of music that was before still mm. had the guitar lead going around yeah but just like put you in a totally different zone and it was just super bizarre but that's another standout feature of this record it's it's just... it is the intros and outros yeah and the flow, yeah ebb and flow and it's, it is like bloody love an intro oh and outro. we love intro <laughs> that is uh that is half house Is there a cure for this infinite badness? For those with infinite sadness? Something like that. I think it went a bit like that. Yeah, that's the one. Infinite badness. So this was like a... We've had this for a little while. This is one of the older demos I'd say we had. We sort of probably wrote this around the time of Playground. And yeah. we sort of... We, we knew this was going to be like... It's going to be a big song. Um, for us anyway. It, it was something completely different. And we, I remember us showing um, Faisal. Faisal from Loaf. 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 Yeah. Loaf. Wicked band. He yeah. loved it. He loved yeah, it. Yeah, and he was just he was he would get us to play it and over and over again. Yeah. And we were like, yeah, maybe this thing is quite as good as we think it is. Then if other people like it, so um, yeah. And then it was just it was just about recreating that demo really again. And it was almost one of those ones where we didn't. There wasn't much change from the demo. To be honest, it's it's the introduction to that kind of. Um, 
Joy Division-y kind of sounding synthy kind of email. How would you say kind of like the Cure kind of side of our band? I, yeah. I mean, it's not. I, I don't know. Sad synthy kind of um, emo yeah, very side of very our British band. British and kind of. the way we did the vocal vo- vocals um, was pretty one take, wasn't it? It was like you Which just made like, me roll it. Yeah. Like, through. I, there, there's a lot of emotion in the in the lyrics in the song and. And I wanted to get that in the vocal take, so I was like, Danny, you got three vocal takes, and we're gonna do them all the way through, and that's we're just gonna go with whatever you, whatever comes out. And I think that was very different for us, and it definitely put us out of our comfort zone, but it definitely gave it gave it a feeling, and it definitely encapsulates the mm. the narrative of the song. Yeah, absolutely. And just big old big old epic. I want to play that one on a massive stage. Yeah. Yeah. Massive. Gorgeous. Massive. Teething. Um, brilliant. I love the song. It's uh, definitely one of my favourites on the record. Yes. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's it's the tribute to Sue, Mia, Smem. And Mark, um, the loss of a friend, Josh Pillinger. Um, sadly, he died in a car accident. And this is this was um, not inherently just about him, but it was a bit of a tribute to him and teething and the struggles that we do and have to deal with in life and loss. Um, I remember, I remember when you first sort of we had we had like the first verse written out, and we you know you had the lyrics that you, I think the lyrics are pretty much the same as how you have how they are now. But then I remember it was around the time that he passed away and you sort of came to mind and we were, we were doing some writing and you said, look, I've got this second verse and it's, it's actually about what's going on now. And I was like, as, as, as hard as it is to sometimes like deal with that stuff and put it in your music straight away, it felt like the right thing. So I was kind mm. of pushing Danny to like, let's, let's go with that. Let's, mm. let's go with that emotion because it doesn't get any more raw than that. And I, th- I think it really paid I th- off. It's, it's a lot more indie sound in this track. and I. I really liked how Alex um, brought like a real shoegazy thing to it as well. It's quite shoegazy as well, um, which I love. Really like. It's definitely got that post-punk kind of Joy Division. Yeah. Baseline kind of. Yeah, I tell you what as well. Uh, we obviously wrote the bass and the vocals separately, and we've been rehearsing uh, the track, and it is a really hard song to sing and play <laughs> in in the choruses and the outro. The rest of it's quite yeah. alright, but. And that, that last vocal that sort of mm. topped it off and it was icing yeah. on the cake, like sort of Dan was like, put me on for the end, where we didn't really have any, it was like the chorus and then we had this whole outro bit which was just like band jamming kind of thing. And Dan was like, just put me over that last bit, I'm just going to try some like, almost like ad lib stuff, wasn't it? I, I literally, I think that bit was just happened, that ending bit, you know. And right there around. You know, that, all of that, yeah. that was literally just roll the, roll the tape, Spielberg, come on! There's the dinosaurs about, you know. Yeah. That was it. It was. It just happened. The dinosaurs are there. Jurassic Park's there. Just film it. Yeah, yeah. I had a white hat, white suit. I was in a field. Just film it. By a lake. Spielberg, film it. Owl is a cat with wings. This is my favourite song on the album. By a mile. It's alright. Bonham-esque drums. There's some weird thing going on with the toms. Dun, 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 and they, sonically, just something happens. And I don't really know what it is. But it, they have this kind of like... Thing going on in the chorus. And I really like the lyrics in this, I think. I'm really pushing the belt out and being a little bit more um, abstract with the style. Perhaps influence from people like Yoni Wolf and Y and some of the stuff on the Anticon label because I really like that kind of style of hip hop. I think I'm not even doing that, but I've, I like that kind of style of um, phrasing lyrics. And uh, I think I kind of approached this song in that kind of way, which was fun. And obviously, we got that mental bum 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 bum. Uh, William Blair played uh, some keys on that as well. 
That was awesome. It was definitely one of those songs that um, I'm glad we played together live, like in the studio, because mm. it is that song is like Phil. That's just always Absolutely. about it. Yeah, it's all about um, groove, isn't it? And even well, now in the practice room, it's just like me and you are like locking into each other, just like mm. looking at each other like fully, like giving it all that. Um, Mm. It's got to sit together. It's got real it wouldn't work. I don't think it would work if it wasn't like, you know, fully, like tied tight together. It wouldn't it wouldn't sound like it does now. When I when I wrote our oh, owl, I was in my room. I remember the da na na like playing that and looping it in. And my little brother at the time I was living with my mother, and my little brother Jamesy came in, and I was that. If you can find this actually, if you go on my Instagram and scroll down, the video is there. And uh, he's got my guitar on, and he was playing along to the loop and singing, and. Uh, he came up with some actual vocal melodies. I didn't use them, obviously, because he's a child and children can't make good music. <laughs> good for nothing. Uh, he's, he's, um, he's a sweetheart. Mm. And uh, he's a little lad, you know, likes trains and stuff like that, you know. Like, little Jamesy. Little Jamesy. Little Loves Jamesy. trains. Can tell you where every train is going to go, mind. Where every train will stop. Usually straight. Yeah. They go straight. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, so I th this was another one that was floating around in the Foxjaw camp for a little while. Um, pretty, pretty kind of the first half was pretty formed, right? Yeah, yeah, it was it's actually. Like, I think this is one I had the least actual like musical input on, I would yeah, say. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, but yeah. it was just the vibe, wasn't it? And yeah. it was just like this. Yeah, Alex. Should, uh, I th yeah, I think yeah. we just got to this point with it, and it was like it's gonna be like it was gonna be like a later on in the album track, and we're just like. That's like it was Alex singing, Alex, because we just thought that kind of the way Alex sings is really would suit the the idea that we wanted to put across. Like we thought about Bats for Bleeding as the demo name. Maybe. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. we would just like go with that and go forth. And... Yeah, totally, totally. And I think um, yeah, like you said, putting it later on in the album did work. And I think it is the most different song on the album. So I think obviously with the organs and the sort of the straight swing vibe to it i think having a different vocalist did work I, you know i don't think mm. it'll be something we'll do on every album i think you know we'll, we'll be doing yeah. back and vocals and stuff but yeah. it was it just it, made sense it just, and it, it just yeah. give it give it like a you know there was so many lyrics and so many vocals to write on this record it just it just give it gives you a chance to do something because obviously that's where you come from as well from writing lyrics and, and singing but mm. also it took a pressure of dan that happened to write like another track yeah and just give some fresh ideas on it because I did, I initially wrote it for Dan. You know, I didn't think they'd let me sing a whole bloody song on the album. You know, it was an honour to do so. Um, but yeah, I gave it to Dan, and he was just like, "Mate, you sing it." It just, it just sounded right coming out of my mouth. Um, I really enjoyed writing the lyrics for this one. Um, normally, when you're writing lyrics, you have to do what Dan did, which is uh, you're writing, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine songs for an album. I just got to focus pretty much on that one song lyrically. Um, and I'm really happy with the lyrics. I think it really summed up where I was, you know. It's uh, it's about the choice of going out or staying in or the choice of like being good or evil or, you know, I think we all have that ability in us. Game of opposites. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, you know, we're all conscious beings, you know, wandering around and it's like we all can make these decisions and, you know, I think we all make good and bad decisions. Yeah. Um, I just wrapped it up in a really artsy-fartsy way. There you go. And actually the second half of the track, Kind of, it just switches. Like, I think that was a very last minute thing. So we had the, it was quite fully formed for the first half, and it just switches to a different riff, and it never comes back again to what we were working, what we were doing before. So it just stays on this riff throughout and just pummels you all the way home. And, and I think it, that really works as well for um, bringing Dan back in. If it was just yeah, like, the, the oh, here's Alex next song. Switch over. Then, mm. so then Dan, Dan's now the predominant vocal in the mix. Yeah. And at that halfway point. So it's quite strange in, in that way. Mm. It's definitely the strangest track on the album. It is. It keeps this beat, same beat for the whole thing. Obviously, Kieran does some brilliant fills was the end, but like it's just got that same feel throughout, but uh, also a very weird song. Also. Of course. How could of we course. not mention? William Blair. William Blair. Came down to the studio with us, and we were just sort of like, this guy can fucking play. And we were like, we want some we want some Rain Man's Europe kind of organs, we want the doors, we want fucking madness. And we were like, can you help us with that? And he just he just went pure, 
oh, pure yeah. into it. Do you know what he mean? was I fully in his like element. Sliding up and down. Like mm. I think there's some videos somewhere of him take, doing his takes. Just so casual though. Just like sat on his sofa, just, but just playing this most intense <laughs> organ solo you've ever seen. I think Dan actually met him in a in the Spinner local pub. And there's spin Shout out the middle and <laughs> Spinner. But um, yeah, Dan, and, Danny uh, met Danny met him there. Yeah. I got chatting to him and then once, yes. once I went with Danny and then we were like, should we actually do this? Should we just bring him down and just see what happens? And it so fucking paid off. And then so yeah. much so that we were just like, do, do rock bands do organ solos in the middle of their tracks nowadays? They yes, fucking they do fucking now. Fucking they do. do fucking now. Um, yeah. It's such a highlight. It really is a highlight. Like, at the, you know, my hair stand up every time I hear that solo. It was It's just so pure in the moment and completely, you know, out of yeah. nowhere yeah, almost. Just, but it, The stars aligned. They absolutely did. They William did. Blair. God William bless. Blair. I put on hats now, so we talk about the monk. The monk is a track um, on the album which is about drunk monks, really, to be honest with you. And uh, it's, it's, to me, it doesn't really make any sense a lot of the time. It just seems to fall into each other, like a, like a fallen monk would do after his, uh, his L's, you know what I mean? Walk, making his way up the stone stairs, back up to the bunks, banging into each wall and, and coon. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, we uh, well, we played last time we played Glastonbury. We walked past. Uh, there was an old monkery. Is it a monkery? Monkery. Yeah. A monkery? yeah. A monkage. Monk. Monk. Monkage. Where yeah. monks hang out. And uh, I remember Danny like he was telling us about the tales of the drunk monks and uh, and uh, it's something that's been in your mind for a while, hasn't it? Well, yeah, I, I just well, it's so important that we all know about the monks that got drunk in the abbey. <laughs> <laughs> but just such noble men can be such heathens like ourselves. Um, yeah, um, the riff. Your, guitar, your guitars are quite, um, like, 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 I think it reminds me of, like, classic rock or something. You know what I mean? Well, that's it. I know, like, even when like, Josh first heard it, he was like, he's not, like, huge on lead lines, but he seems to like what I do, which I, I'm very honoured. Because it's never, like, it's never about solos and it's never about taking over. It is about intertwining with the vocals. And uh, that was just one of those lead lines I just, it, I heard it in my head before I even played it. It was like, yep. Yeah. That's it, and uh, again, Dan was like, "Yep, vibed with it," and I think that added to the just a little sip, just a little sip. As I'm sipping away on my magic potion, and I do all the time. I did last night. I was on top of the fridge. It's the thing. It's also a, a, quite a lot about not just about monks, obviously, but it's about alcohol and drinking. And mm. I even shout out my local pub in it, the Midland Spinner. Ding 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 Love the Midlands Spinner, my favourite. Um yeah, so and I I love that that heavy droney bit at the end, the noise bit. Actually that was one of my favourite bits of the record actually. I know it's a real hit and miss song for people. It's uh I'd say it's like the wart on a beautiful king's face. It's like it's it's part it's part of the it's part of the whole like picture, but you wouldn't want to just pick the wart off and marry it. Or... I think that ending bit, um, the influence for me with that, I think is is I'd say it's quite full of hell. It. Like it's got very noise crushing, like kind of thing going on, and the the high kind of like vocals mm. really, yeah, really, and it's got that lottery for the throwback fans to the early <laughs> days. Uh, lottery. Yeah. It's got a kind of lottery almost kind of riff. It kind of sounds kind of old Fox Jewel. Yeah. Right? When I heard that riff, I was quite surprised. I was like, this sounds like really early Fox Jewel, mm. but it's just wrapped up in this kind of new direction. Um, I love the outro as well. Mm -hmm. Is that how it goes? I can't yeah. remember. Yeah, that, yeah. Well, that, that's how it goes. Yeah, there you go. The Monk. The Royal Swan. The Royal Swan. Old song, old demo, mind. We had that for a long time. Yeah, I think this is that's literally the oldest song. This it's kind of the it's kind of the whole album concept, wasn't it? Kind of wrapped up in this song. What yeah. we wanted to do was like based around this seven minute long piece of music. So And uh, it's it, I with the vocals again they came quite late. 
really happy with where they ended up, you know. And obviously we had Emily as well involved in this track. She Emily Isherwood. She, Isherwood. Yeah. Isherwood. She um sings alongside me in the verses and she has a a, a bit where she does this really beautiful a lot a lot better and nicer than that. It was so lovely. Beautiful voice. Yeah. Beautiful voice. So we just, we just really wanted to do this like monster. Yeah. Like a seven minute long monster that just goes in between all the different stuff. Almost like just to everything that's in the album just smash it into yeah. one one bucket and then drink it. Our good friend Eve actually described it as triumphant, um, which I think is quite a, a good way to describe this track. I think there's a there's also there's this thing that we all kind of discovered how to do this round the mic thing with our voices work uh, quite well together in the, that way. The, the Beach Boys thing. Yeah, the Beach Boys thing. Or the yeah. Queen thing. Yeah, the Somebody Queen. to Love is the best Queen song. Fact. Um, and it kind of has that, you know? like. Yeah, we, we all sort so of... Matter. It's weird because we kind of discovered that right at the end, but we wanted yeah. this kind of like... When we were layering, layering the harmonies, we wanted this kind of almost like it to sound like 70s and old. Yeah. So we all yeah. gathered around the mic and all just sung the same harmony, but the variation unison, yeah, in, in the unison. voices. And we, we hear it back and we're like, we're like, whoa. Oh, that's how they made it on oh. the, the old records. That's, that's why it sounds the way it does. It's almost the voices meeting in the room first mm. before it goes into the mic. Yeah, that's it. Like, And then, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's how it sounds. You just really suit a Russian eye, you do. My ears are a little bit Love open it. up the size. So and the on. brask is, is great. And again, Tom Haskins, um, I've worked with Tom before in my previous project, and uh, I just had to have him involved. I love, I love um, brass in rock music and, and especially sax i think it done we just, well it's just we just wanted it to be huge didn't we? Mm. we just had to like and then on the way out it's like we wanted it to have this like the moog on the end yeah the introduction to uh that's a that's a mini moog isn't it i'm using a a sub fatty now for stuff but i think we used it that's an actual like an old mini moog kind of sound isn't it yeah got yeah it's based based around based the old, that, old yeah. mini moog and uh, that kind of vocal that gang vocal at the end i just think is really pretty you know, and the kind of the, the phrase, you know, you've already won your royal swan. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just a, a very, a very powerful song. It means a lot to me. Biggest undertaking we've done, as yeah. like, you know, working on it and producing it and trying to make everything, all the different elements fit. Also, it's other. like describing lyrically this big swan destroying like a, a sit, like a big city, and people shooting arrows at it. Reminds me of The Hobbit. Yeah, it reminds me of the late yeah. tap, but it's, yeah. it's when you hear the guitars and they're going, clean it, clean it, clean it. To me, I, I've got this weird thing where it sounds almost like the squawk of this giant swan. Yeah. I know it sounds crazy, but it kind of sounds like and her screech. Almost like the, the chants, the, yeah. to the, the shining and great, great golden swan. swan. That almost sounds like the, the people down below. Mm. They, they need to block it out. That was a U line, I think, though. The second line, the... Um, the the statues of gargles are crippled and dripping. Oh yeah. He, I, I think you said that to me. Yeah, that was. We, and I was like, oh, that's a strange yeah. line. Yeah. The statues of gargles are crippled and dripping. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I like that. Yeah, that was that was it in the studio. Like, that was in we the were, studio. We were doing yeah. vocals at the time. It was like, what words you got? And we just throwing words about. So yeah. To block the shining, shining and great golden, golden swan. swan. 